a half vampire, half mortal man becomes a protector of the mortal race while slaying evil vampires. Wesley Snipes Blade is up next on Inside Movies. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, today we're talking uh, the 1998 film Blade. Um, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Um, yeah, we're trying to do new movie re reviews every week. Uh, so I'm a comic book writer. My name is George McHale, and I am joined by novelist Andrew Buckley, writer, illustrator, GMB Kamichuk, and the editor-in-chief and head writer of Merck Publishing, Murphy. Hi. <laughs> hey guys uh thanks for being on the show uh let's get into it let's talk about uh blade uh what's the good what do you guys like about this movie i'm so confused about this movie because i love it but my good list is really short and my bad list is really long and i don't know what happened <laughs> uh but casting wesley snipes was a great choice for this freaking character he's such a badass because he was at the height of his like action stardom here before he went crazy and beat that guy up in vegas and then went to prison for tax evasion like this was pre that so this was the perfect uh, time to get him it was also right at the time i think when vampire the masquerade the role-playing game was like everywhere and timothy bradstreet's art is referenced a few times without credit in scenes in this movie so i know their source material is definitely was drawn on for marvel's blade was definitely playing in the world of darkness so uh the big uh dice rolling weirdo in the movie theater me definitely noticed those references when the film rolled the first time so uh got my attention for sure yeah i love the martial arts in this like wesley snipes is such a badass and that nightclub scene with like the cool techno music and he's just like and he's got that sword the sword is so cool and it like you know if you don't know how to hold it it'll like rip your hand off it's it's just so awesome and like crazy and fun well the choreography is insane and that is wesley snipes doing all of those moves in real time the entire movie like that is it's so impressive like they don't do the thing they do now all the time where it's like everything's like slowed down or like or like it's it's all hidden like no all of those moves were just laid out in front of you for just to just to be in awe of i remember that when i saw blade the first time i was just blown away by how awesome it was to see someone it was the first time i saw super strength on film and i believed it. yeah right it was the first like marvel superhero movie where you kind of forgot that oh yeah they're making a superhero movie essentially but they're just packaging it in vampires in the supernatural so actual regular people will go to the theater it was just so wild well this really was the start of like the era of superhero movies i think that's one of the one of the coolest things about it you know whether you want to talk about enjoying it or not it like it kicked off what we know now to be you know especially the well the mcu obviously um but you know this was this is where it all started it is is enjoying it or not is that like a question like <laughs> <laughs> we're not there yet no i loved it don't worry <laughs> i've always loved this movie though i was a i was an emo kid like this is this was right up my alley oh and steven dorf is just so amazing in this film okay so one great thing about this film is its mythology is large but not all of it is on screen and I think that's a real strength of the film is that the characters are talking about things in the mythology of the vampires that are clearly bigger than the scenes of the film. And so you, rather than feel like you know all the rules of the vampire world, you only know some of them. And uh, we're following this day walker through this, you know, ass kicking action film. And he's not too interested in the subtleties of the vampire world. So just as they're about to reveal something else, he'll just cut off their head and they turn to dust. <laughs> Yeah, I really liked Wesley Snipes' portrayal of Blade. Like, he's really uh, focused and, like, intense. But he's also got, like, a bit of swagger. And uh, just the way he moves. And, he, like, you know, when he, he he hits people, he just he has, like, a little bit of ex extra on it. Just a little bit of extra flavor. And, like, you know, the um, some motherfuckers are always trying to ice, uh, ice skate uphill. And just, oh like, he's, <laughs> oh, man, he's just so cool, man. That and, was like, his line. He wrote that. And they liked it so I much they kept it in. I hated that line. <laughs> yeah, it made, it made me cringe even back when I first saw the damn movie. But to hear it what? again, I'm like, eh, yeah, that still sounds like Wesley Snipes wrote something and they put it in the movie because it's Wesley <laughs> Snipes. Yep. 
Well, on the on the uh, the note of you know him just being so perfect for the role and like being so in it, like he he did interviews as Blade, and like he he yep. was so committed to this that he was like he's the reason the movie became you know, and especially was so popular. But it's so weird that he was so committed to it because he wasn't trying to make this movie and had never heard of Blade. Like he was trying to make Black Panther. He wanted to be Black Panther, and no one would put that into a reality but then they're like well we have blade so they offered him that and then he read the comics and loved it so much and then got so fiercely attached to it as a producer that he had a lot of growing control which you can see as the movies progress and get progressively worse as the trilogy <laughs> progresses that he did indeed have a lot of control uh to greg's point i do like the world building that they put into this with like you know, the vampires turn to ash like instantly and they dust. And I think that's really cool. Um, they have like their familiars with the tattoos. And there's like, you know, there's like this like kind of science project to like, you know, get them to all be able to walk into the daylight and the blood bags and and like the humans and stuff like that. It's just then they have like these discos where blood comes out. It's just it's neat. Like it's a whole world of vampires that is somewhat new and, and kind of a new take on some of this. Yeah, because it sounds silly, but one of the things about, like, vampire storytelling, you know, it's a tale as old as time. But the truth is, you often ask yourself, if you're reading any modern version of it, like, why wouldn't they just wear sunscreen then? Why wouldn't they just wear a helmet? Why wouldn't they just... And they just addressed all those things in this movie, and that's what the vampires do. They wear a lot of sunscreen, they wear helmets, they wear, you know, gloves, and they walk outside during the day. Like, as ridiculous as it is, that is what you'd do if you were Stephen Dorff vampire <laughs> well and as far as uh what you were talking about with the with the sword and the vampires turning instantly into ash i am really impressed with how good those effects still look of, with those the vampires <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like, yeah those, those ones effects. hold up really well yeah. the cgi blood is yeah the blood god work. moment a little oh, we gotta wait we gotta wait guys for the bad <laughs> Oh, right. sorry, sorry, sorry. I got one more. Hey, I got my Vampire Weekend shirt on. That kind of fit. <laughs> um, also, uh, I would like to shout out uh, Chris Christopherson yeah. as uh, oh. Whistler, like the yeah. Q to Blades Bond. You know, like he's just he's awesome. He's and I really like he's got like kind of a tortured past, uh, but he's helping Blade and and uh, and I just like that character. He's he's grizzled. And here's a fun fact: was that he was originally created for uh, the Spider-Man animated show, and then they like incorporated him into uh, the movies and into the comic books eventually. Well, the the like really tight. I don't want I don't want to call them bros because I really feel like they had like a really strong relationship that they just kind of you don't they don't talk about it they don't tell us about it you just get to see it and I just felt I felt that I believed it I I really I really liked it. Yeah, they definitely had that vibe that if you you know like if you've been around veterans who have been through some things that they just they don't have to talk about it they just look at each other and they're like yep yeah, okay and yeah that's what we're doing and that is how it's going to be uh, they got that across like that they've been fighting this battle for a long time. And as silly and ridiculous as it is to make a movie about vampire hunters, they took it so seriously that so you believe So seriously. Yeah. But that's kind of what, I mean, that what made it. I mean, Chris Christopherson was like born to play angry, limping ex-vampire hunter. But they had those weird moments for all the seriousness that they took it. They had those weird moments of levity where he's like, I fixed this. You want to try it out? He's like, it's heavy. He said, yeah, but you're so big. Like it was <laughs> those like weird little moments that were kind of throwaways, but gave it brief moments of levity and what was otherwise a pretty, you know, while ridiculous, fairly dark movie. Is more than an action movie, which is all the only part of it that I remembered. And this is, I was watching it through again now. I was like, I'm actually like really feeling for him. <laughs> I love that they didn't go like any kind of weird romantic angle with the girl. Like, oh yeah. Same. Like Blade w couldn't give less of a shit. <laughs> it's really, he uses it as, as bait <laughs> in the first couple days. I mean, it's, it's pretty neat that he had that kind of detachment from, you know, humans because, you know, they're just humans. Uh, I would be remiss to point out that I have a monster series. It's called Cover Darkness. It's like Game of Thrones meets the Universal Monsters. I love vampires. And we've got a kind of a, a cool new take uh, of vampires in our series actually coming out this October. Uh, written by me, illustrated by uh, Andy Belanger. We have like an elf vampire origin story that is uh, pretty badass. Actually, I'm going to show some art right now. 
here's a quick preview of it. It's super dope. Uh, look for that in October. And Cover Darkness is out from Sourcepoint Press. So check out my series. Uh, link in the description of the video. Um, let's get into the bad, though. Like, what do you guys not like about Blade? What the fuck was up with the whole meditation flower thing and then cutting the root off? I didn't, I didn't get any of that. There's, and I think it must have bothered me when I watched it, you know, the first 30 times when I was younger. But this time I was like, I don't get it. I, I still don't get it. Does anybody, does anybody have any enlightenment about this thing? I guess, I guess what they're supposed to get at is that, like, he's cutting his roots away, right? Like, that's over. This part of his life is ending. Because Whistler's dead? Because Whistler's dead, right? The one thing that was worth nurturing, right? Feeding the roots, keeping it alive. Because Whistler is a real human. And so he's alive and living and so represented by the plant. And once he is now just going to be unmoored, right? He's just going to be a dead thing in the world, despite his daywalker status. I think that's what they were going for. And this is another point I'd like to make about this movie. It was taking itself seriously. And so when someone suggested, let's put some pathos and maybe a little bit of a poetic, uh, symbolic moment in it, they didn't say, nah, we don't need it. Wesley Snipes fought for that scene, apparently. That makes sense because uh, there's no way that was Stephen Norrington. Like the director <laughs> is not known for his nuances, <laughs> so <laughs> that's uh, that makes sense. That's not to want to put something like that in there for sure. So yeah, we gotta address like the biggest thing though. It's the ending, right? With the with the terrible, terrible CGI and the the it was whole the best they could do at the time. Oh, dude, no, they couldn't because they did such a good job on the fucking vampires getting destroyed. Like, how can you have that effect look so damn cool and then have blood looks so stupid <laughs> it's so annoying it kind of like ruins the movie for like re-watching it does but they had real issues with the ending so part of the reason that that cgi is so fucked up was because they couldn't figure out the ending to this damn movie there's an alternate ending on the dvd too where the blood gut was like this big swirling whirlpool of blood but when they showed that to test audiences people freaked out because as soon as you stop having it a man or a person versus a person and persons versus blood whirlpool it doesn't get it's not very interesting so I, I think that was part of the reason they just simply couldn't settle on it well it doesn't help that the villain that he's fighting throughout this whole movie is Steven not Dorf? interesting <laughs> like <laughs> i did not like him i didn't think it was i didn't think um he didn't seem like he could stand up to blade like at all like you put them next to each other i'm like ah, he's gonna kick his ass <laughs> he just doesn't seem didn't seem scary you know yeah the matchup in the sequel in the second movie was way better this yeah. this one was steven Dor I mean, what even happened to steven dorf has anybody ever seen steven dorf re again recently he's Since around blade? he's done some films he's has done he? some films he did one where he like went to prison he did one with val kilmer that i liked quite a bit Hmm. I liked uh, Deacon Frost and Stephen Dorse. I'll, I'll admit that he doesn't seem like he's very physically imposing and not like a proper hand-to-hand -hand combat match for Wesley Snipes. Um, but I like that he just was like this kind of uh, ambitious, like he wasn't a true blood. And I like that he was just kind of trying to, you know, screw the system and like, I'm going to you know move up the ranks and, and run this. I kind of like that. Anti-establishment vampire. And you could, you know, you can appreciate that. He was trying to change the change the system from the inside, you know. And he wanted to get back to some some traditional roots of the vampire people, and uh, he was tired of the of the status quo. You know, we can respect that among a modern vampire. He was kind of like a finance bro vampire. Like, yeah. <laughs> he would have been it for sure into crypto. <laughs> he would totally be into crypto. Oh my God. Be into it's crypto so true. For sure. I think yeah, he's a bro. I think that was the, I think that's the main reason that I don't see him as like vampire and bro in my mind. Just don't really they don't meld well. Vampire crypto would be spar would be spelled crypto though, right? <laughs> oh my god! Right? I will get guys. We've got a new NFT project. We just launched. it's called Crypto. It's all <laughs> vampire all NFT, and it's all versions of Wesley Snipes. Somebody should do this. This this is a million, good jillion dollar idea, Greg. Oh my gosh! If you're interested in a scam, you can use this idea, I suppose. One thing I didn't really like, and that was kind of weird to me, was like um, Deacon Frost having like Blade's mom as a girlfriend. I didn't think it was necessary, and it seemed like kind of convoluted that she was still alive. That was I, comic book accurate. 
Um, that is literally like, how it happened in the comic book. I, I, I don't think it played out that good on the screen. And uh, there was a weird, also a weird sexual tension between Blade and his mother, and I didn't like that. That was, that was strange. <laughs> that was weird, too. Maybe that's what was actually putting you off, George. <laughs> it was just like, oh, no, she just, just make her go away. <laughs> so the taboo vibes actually did what they're supposed to do, right? <laughs> I guess so. Right? Because I didn't like that scene. Like, I think it's good. I think actually it was kind of a good surprise in the film overall, but it is, it's like, yeah, you do get a like, mm, nah, uh, uh. but I guess if the point is to be repulsed by vampirism, that's a good way to do it. That the hunger stretches past even the bonds of family. Ooh. Oh man, you went real weird there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I'm just trying to be poetic about this fine feature film. Which we have to, we've got to give props to this film for doing one thing absolutely right. It allowed Guillermo del Toro to make another movie. That is true. In it. Yeah. So if not for Blade, there's no Blade 2. My favorite Blade. It is the best one. Blade 2 is the best Blade, but I like all the Blades, including Blade Trinity. A lot. <laughs> um, but let's get into what? our final grades for, yeah, I do, <laughs> um, for Blade. Uh, I'll go first. Um, for me, I give it a B plus, um, you know, for Blade plus. I don't know. <laughs> it's awesome, dude. Like, it's lots of cool martial arts, lots of cool style. Like, it was, you know, before the Matrix and stuff, it was just, you know, black leather, kung fu, and nightclubs and techno music. It's like late 90s, and it's just cool, awesome fun. I like it a lot. It definitely blew my mind when it first came out and I saw it in theaters the first time because I was expecting a super C plus movie, but I was just went because it's like, Hey, there's a vampire movie. I'll go see that. And totally blew me away. A modern rewatching of it though. It doesn't quite hold up the uh, CG at the end. It does not stick the landing. So I'll have to give it uh, four out of five fellas. Ice skating uphill. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um i um i love this movie as a as young andrew loved loved the shit out of this movie i owned it on vhs and then i owned it on dvd and so i've watched it a lot of times uh but yeah as the rewatch it was too long two hours was too long of all of this um so i give it four spinning glaives beheading multiple vampires at once out of five <laughs> i liked there, there was more of it that I didn't like than I remembered, but the stuff that I do like, which is mostly Blade himself, I think I think holds holds up. Um, so I'm gonna give it four out of six uh, blue vials of Vampire Killer. Nice. Nice. All right, that's going to do it for another episode of uh, Inside Movies. I've been George McHale, uh, joined by Andrew Blackley, GMB Kamichuk, and Murphy. Uh, check us out on our social media, our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, all that stuff, and Cover Darkness. Uh, ask your local comic store to bring it in for you. Until next time, peace. <laughs>